Welcome gamers, this week's episode of Last Call Gaming, we're episode number 166, today is April 23rd, my name is Craig Prowse, and joining me, as always, Major Month Man. Dude, this time is like flying by. It's, what do you mean, like month to month? Yeah. Why, what, 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 what are you missing? Is, I don't know. You know it's going to be October, and I'm, my birthday's here. I, I'm not missing anything, I just feel like it's going so fast. It's I feel cool. like just yesterday was like January. Yeah, the only good thing about that is is that means the games are going to start coming. 2023, all the, all the stuff we've been waiting for like the last year and a half, or it should be on our doorstep. We have, what's next, is Star Wars the next big one? That we yeah, have? it's next week. Oh yeah, we're, we're definitely getting that one. Yeah, but now I'm like under the gun because I was sitting around so much fucking not doing anything and when I should have been playing stuff. Although I have been hearing Dying Light 2 is actually pretty good. Um, I want Dead Island 2? Or what I say? Dying Light? <laughs> Dead, Dead Island 2 is actually pretty good. I want to let a couple more people I know get further into it, but I wouldn't mind jumping into that as well. I want to, but I feel like that game will probably be on sale in like a month, so should we should just wait and pick it up on a sale. Because I guarantee you, if we bought it tomorrow, neither of us would play it. <laughs> right. Because we don't want to start anything before Star Wars. Star Wars is the big gem coming. Yeah, that's definitely the next one on the list. So, guys, uh, apologies again. We've been noodling with an idea to try to do a show every other week. And um, it just seems once we do that, we kind of just fall a little behind on some of the news. So I think we are just officially going to go back to doing a show every um, weekend. But instead of being like, like I think we're, our thing says Saturday... I think I just put it to the weekend. So if it comes, if the show comes out on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that'll be the ballpark of when our episodes will start be coming out every week. And for any of you who have any problem with that, we're sorry. But <laughs> you again, <can>. suck it. <laughs> yeah, suck it. So guys, if you're watching the YouTube version of this show, like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit that notification bell. If you guys are interested in following us on any of our social media, uh, you can look at our link tree link in the description of the YouTube video, and you can follow us on any of the social media platforms. And if you guys are listening to the audio-only version of this platform, uh, <coughs> check us out on your podcast platform of choice, and you can find us on all of the good ones, all the big ones, anywhere that you listen to the most so uh before we dive into our main topics guys we'd like to what are you up to we take a second we talk about what we've been playing and what we've been watching so uh you want to start us off Joey? yeah i can go first um uh since last time i've actually finished my runs of re4 i didn't 100 percent it because i'm kind of at like a point where i'm like ah i don't as much as i love this game i don't want to keep playing it anymore because i've already done like Four you made your bit this time. I've done like four run throughs already, maybe like five. And so what's annoying is the ones I'm missing I could I could do no problem. Is the S plus normal and the S plus hardcore, but you have to do it from a new game so your stuff doesn't roll over. So that's not so much a problem as the fact that I would have to do them both individually. So that's like eight hours right there versus if I just had to do the hardcore one, that'd be fine. Once something doesn't respect my time, I'm like, ah, I'm kind of like over it. And I know I could do the pro plus one and that would knock those out. But at the same time, the other achievement that I'm missing is the shooting gallery. And that one's just so annoying to do. I could do it, but literally like the other day, just to get an S on one of them. Cause I was going to try it. I have like four out of 12 of them. And it took me like an hour just to do one of them because it was so hard. I'm like, dude, I'm not doing this anymore. Especially for like eight more. I don't know if they're easier or worse, whatever. I'm just over it and I'm moving on to the next game. So I washed my hands of this for now. you think if you take too big of a break, though, you'd be able to come back and... You said you plan on going back and getting it eventually. Or is like, do you need that muscle memory in you now? I think maybe I could go back and do it. Because I have saves set up in certain areas. So it's like... Okay, like, I could do the easier levels, kind of get the muscle memory back on it a little easier. Because, again, if I spend an hour doing it the other day when I'm at my peak on muscle memory, then what's the difference of right. coming back later, maybe trying it and getting lucky or something? That feels. So, after I did that, I actually started Ghostwire Tokyo. I'm only, like, an hour and a half in. I meant to start it sooner. But for some reason, I got caught up yesterday watching, like, Anaconda. I don't know why, <laughs> but it was just really yeah. speaking to me. And Not all that. <laughs> I love, like, a shitty creature feature and that's just kind of one of them i don't know what it is about that movie but i love it but uh ghost is actually pretty dope so far i really like it um it's a lot different than i thought it was going to be in japanese or english there's english yeah no i didn't know that okay i'm playing it in japanese and so at some points i'm feeling like i'm like oh man i'm missing the conversation because guys talking about trying to fight people and stuff so i I don't i almost kind of wanted to switch it over but i'm like no you know i'm just gonna stick it out because at least like when I play like Yakuza, there's not important conversation going on while I'm having to play something sometimes that it's like I'm missing it. So it seems like they have that timing right where I wish they did with this. 
But I really like the way that it looks, and I do like the combat. It's a lot different than I thought it was going to be. You saw, I know you, you, saw, me, you saw me play it over here once. Yeah, or but... Or was it just that long ago? It, it was that kind of long ago that maybe I'd forgotten a little bit, but also there's a difference between like seeing someone... Because this is very different, the combat. Seeing you playing it and actually playing it and seeing how it feels to charge up, no one to yeah. let go and use like the spells and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But I'm actually really, really enjoying it so far, so hopefully I can beat that before Star Wars. And then, uh, uh, as far as watching anything, I haven't seen too much else, but I did go see the Mario movie, and I absolutely love it. So if you haven't seen it, you've been sitting on it, get out there and go see it. Um, I think it's an amazing movie. I agree with like everything. A lot of the stuff you guys were saying, like there's no reason to go into this and be like a crazy movie critic and put my critic cap on and be like, oh, well, the story. It's like, no, like you go and you have fun and that's ultimately, it's so much fun. The only complaint complaint I had, we were just talking about it, is I don't really care for Cranky Kong's voice, but other than that, I love this movie. It's I, so good. Yeah, and since we've talked about it last, like it's even gone up. I think it's close to like, 700 something million now it's like it's, it's i know past 500 yeah for sure. it's just yeah it's just outrageous man so yeah i love that they're doing good i hope that it beats avatar 2 because i hate avatar <laughs> yeah right <laughs> never uh, was that everything my man yeah what about you uh let's see as far as what <laughs> beat avatar 2 the third highest grossing movie of all time at like 2.2 billion <laughs> Uh, I just don't get it. It wasn't <laughs> even that good the first time. Let's see. As far as what I've been watching, um, I finished up. So I ended up watching A Quiet Place 2, which was uh, obviously the sequel to the original one. I've never seen it before. This one came out on 2020. It was, I watched it on Paramount+. Plus. Um, I think maybe I just these movies were just too built up for me. Everyone said they were, they were these great movies, and they are, I thought, really good. But I just don't think they're as good as I thought they were going to be. Like, especially number two. It's no longer a quiet place. There's so much talking in this movie that, like, it's it got rid of what, to me, was what made number one, I think, really special. That this movie could go on its whole laurels of pretty much silence and, and, and sign language and whispering. They do a, they do some flashbacks. They go to some places where they're, they're underwater and they can talk and things like that. So, I don't know. That already kind of threw me off. Um, I thought that number three was supposed to get to be the origin. I bet I guess number two, in the very beginning, is when the monster's land there so i guess you can consider that the origin point maybe part three will be like different aspects of the world that it hit because um it, it is still focused on like this one city um i didn't know that uh cillian murphy was in it and yeah, i love one. him as an actor so he was it was really nice and refreshing seeing him in this um i don't want to ruin anything but, i mean it came out 2020 I, I figured i thought i was the last guy to watch this movie but I will just point out that they, there is this whole water concept to me that, like the movie Signs, I was like, well, this is part of the problem for these aliens. And, like, what the hell? Because what I don't get is when they rush in and, they, and they, they're just instantly there. You make a noise and they're there. Well, then what do they do when you're done talking? Like, do they just go walk away? Like, do they just stand there? Like, what, I don't get what the, what the goal is. Like, I don't get the whole concept of what these things are supposed to be doing. So... It was fun to watch and, you know, because that's a horror movie that's kind of original. I just don't really get the premise of, like, why does this thing even exist? What are they doing? They're not taking over the world. They're not eating you for, like, a food source. So, I don't know. To me, I was just kind of like, eh. They're kind of just there, almost like zombies in a way. Yeah, they're just there. And if you make a noise and they show up and then the next thing you know, they're gone. I'm like, well, what have you been doing for the last nine hours? Like, roaming around eating deer? So, I don't know. So, the movie was good, but I don't think it was as good as everyone made it out to be if there is a number three though since i'm invested at this point i would go watch the number three um as far as what i've been playing i'm still playing uh chained echoes a game that came out on december 8th 2022 uh developed by matthias linda and published by deck 13 so there's four acts in this game i think when i was talking on it with gino i was still in act one maybe two now i'm on act four i'm on the i'm pretty close to the end dude this storyline is just really deep and intricate you can see that it pulls from all these things like uh, Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy 6 there's a point in this game where it's just kind of like Final Fantasy 7 there's this character he's kind of the main guy he has like a mental breakdown you go into his mind to try to like put him back together so I just had huge you know Cloud Strife kind of vibes doing that um, right now I'm at the end of the game where I'm picking up all the final characters like Raphael I'm getting all the emblems I just got the achievement for getting all the recruits for the base um, I'm starting to I have all the I'm starting to gain more pieces to get the ultimate weapons and uh, it's just a lot of fun. It's a beautiful game to play. If you've got the time to do it, I, I would say do it. But it's it's easily an over 35-hour game. So, like, 
once I'm done with this, then it's going back to like finishing Resident Evil 4 and uh, and a couple games like that. But I needed a good RPG on my palette because you know you, you need those once in a while. So I have Nino Kuni too on my list as my next RPG. Oh yeah, I shout out play. to Gino because I think he just beat it. And I, I saw the ending, dude. That thing just looked badass. It just looked like a really good playable anime. I think maybe you should play the second one versus the first one because I heard the second one's more accessible as far as like the combat goes. Yeah, and I know a lot of people will hold Nino Kuni one as like one of the greats, but to me, it looked like two was more my style of game. It yeah, one is really really good, but it's also kind of a product of that time. I feel you. So, uh, but that being said, guys, leave down in the comments below what you've been playing, what you've been watching. Let us know what you guys have been up to. So, uh, with that down and out of the way, guys, let's move into our main topics. And the first one is that um, Microsoft is kind of having a bit of issues lately and the main thing is that it's their first party games and the one we're going to kind of talk about is being locked at this 30 fps uh you know 30 frames per second and a lot of people are having a big issue and mainly because it's not an opening option that you get in the beginning of the game it's something that's going to be locked and they're going to release the performance mode later now this is a game that's coming out on may second and just to kind of put it in context if you guys aren't sure what the real difference is so the high fidelity mode which is also called the quality mode will generally make the game look nicer but you're going to get less frames per second which uh, makes actual gameplay less fluid versus the performance mode which uh, the game is not going to look quite as good but the moment to moment gameplay will be much more stable and responsive due to input due to higher frames per second so uh, with that being said, I was gonna say I kind of want to jump in. Really oh yeah, quick yeah, yeah. Someone yeah, ask you, yeah, yeah, because there are lots of games that has this option. Even Resident Evil Four has this option. Generally, when I'm playing something, I always go for performance over graphical fidelity. I would rather it run better, run smoother, run it like a smooth sixty and look a little worse than whatever. Is that generally how you go too? Uh, well, I, I, it's weird because I don't think I play as many shooters as you. So when I go the, a quality mode at thirty. For me, I don't really notice that big of a difference. But the more I'm playing games, like after playing Horizon and after playing God of War and seeing more games at 60, I'm kind of slowly moving into that direction. So it, I can see where these guys are getting mad of going, especially a shooter. Right? It's a valid where, complaint, where I, yeah. I, I, I would imagine that shooters are probably the things that you need the most to be at 60 if you're going to be... I mean, I don't know how much online this is going to be. This isn't like playing Call of Duty or Halo or something like that, Where, it, but it's still going to be noticeable. So, right. Um, this came from Polygon, and it had this to say. It says, uh, When Arcane Studios launches its vampire hunting shooter Redfall in May, it will ship on Xbox <coughs> with a frame rate capped at 30 FPS, according to the game's official Twitter account. The ability to play Redfall at 60 FPS in performance mode will be added to the game at a later date, Arkane announced Wednesday. Redfall is launching on Xbox consoles with quality mode only. The Redfall account reads, let's see, that means 30 FPS at 4K resolution on Xbox Series X and 30 FPS at 1440p uh, resolution on Xbox Series X, Arkane explained. I don't know if I'm really saying that right, but let's see. Redfall will also launch on Windows PC on May 12th, where it will seemingly not be performance constrained as players on PC can push toward a 60 FPS frame rate or beyond with more powerful hardware. Reaction to this Redfall announcement has been resoundingly negative, with numerous comments on Twitter calling for a delay or a 1080p 60 FPS option on Xbox platforms. A delay for Redfall seems unlikely at this stage, given that the game was already pushed out of 2022 last May in order to deliver the best, most polished version of the game publisher, but as the uh, Softworks said at the time. Yeah, see, when you're reading it, all those numbers kind of jump in. It is kind of put into perspective. But, yeah, so it is interesting that this game was already pushed back once be to get a best version. I mean, and now they're saying that they can't do that. I don't get how you can't especially like i was saying earlier there's already games that are running on next gen that aren't shooters that like are god of war horizon ratchet of clank which was a few years back now that are running at 60 fps so and this is arcane arcane's known to make good games so it's curious of why a game that like redfall that doesn't look i mean we watched the trailer it doesn't look like anything's blowing my mind or that there's a ton right. of action on there so what do you think the issue is why do you think they're they're not making these cap when other games that are first part because i understand if it's third party right that's on them to try to hit all these different um hardwares but when this is your so this is your hardware you think this game would be made first and foremost 
for the primary hardware. You know, that's part of the problem, too, and that's what I'm thinking. It's like, I don't know if it's just, like, a mismanagement issue, because at this point, you have to say, okay, like, we were only making it for our console, whether or not we were making it for anyone else, but they're not the only one who's had, like, this issue, too, so... um since I started Ghostwire Tokyo, there was a thing coming out because that just came to Xbox like a week or so ago mm-hmm. that it actually, again, this is a first party game now, but it launched on PlayStation a year ago. There was that year delay that it looks worse and runs worse on there. And I do feel like it runs clunky. I'm like, was part of that exclusivity deal was like, hey, this can't come out till a year later, but you can't work on it that whole year or do something about it. Like this is a first party game and it runs and looks worse compared with this i think what's worse with that too is like at a later date what is a later date yeah that was the other thing they didn't announce when that is a month like it would have been better if instead of saying a later date been like i so i don't know i think they needed to come out and explain the situation with this one because you don't have a later date and there's no good reason why something like this should even be happening yeah i don't get it because well do you think that it has to do with that they're still because does Redfall come out on the like the Series S and the One X? I was almost thinking that too, and I was thinking like, is that part of the problem? Is their whole stupid "Let's Play Anywhere" initiative? Because that really seemed like that kind of anchored them to that old hardware, and it's like, dude, just let that stuff go. Like, I don't get why you can't you. You should be able to see the tea leaves now. My Xbox Go. Yeah, like at this point in the game, you should be like, you know what? This is really holding us back. It's causing bad press. We're just going to turn around and say, hey, you know what? I know we said this, but sorry, we're not going to be able to support that stuff anymore. You're going to have to get a new yeah. Xbox. And they're readily available. And if you don't, then who can- it's just like old consoles. You get left behind. If you don't get something new, you do get some things. But not everything needs to be on every platform under the sun. Yeah, I think you're right. This is something that they should have came out and actually said why because if you are going to not give people the option but then at the same time i know a lot of people are are outraged but like we were saying earlier like is is this a game that's actually going to need to run at 60 feet and notice the big difference because watching the trailer i don't think it i mean i'm looking at it going does it need to be any sharper or any faster than what i'm looking at like wouldn't you prefer it to i don't know i guess not be broken you know what i mean because if this is stopping it from running unbroken i'd rather play the game unbroken day and day and i guess get the get the uh the, the performance mode later but at the same time i think it's unacceptable i was gonna ask you is it acceptable do you think it's a, not a big deal or is this just completely embarrassing like what light do you think this is painting in microsoft moving forward and like I don't, do we even have an official <coughs> fps of what starfield's gonna be isn't there a rumor that this could be it could launch at like 30 because i don't think they've locked in starfield at 60 fps either another shooting game another first party game yeah I, I think it's just more like embarrassing like unacceptable is like a hard term because there are games you can play at 30 fps that run perfectly fine and work really good but at this point it is just embarrassing because they're it's not like this game looks crazy special. Like, I don't mean to dog on it. I'm personally not interested in it. I'm going to play it. But it doesn't look like it's a graphical powerhouse. It doesn't look like it's... Unless we, we, we're we going to play it and it's going to be completely different because they haven't shown anything different. It doesn't look like it's doing anything different than any other game or anything better or groundbreaking. That you have all these other games that are doing way more and running better and you're doing less and still running it. Yeah, how is Borderlands running at 60 FPS and you're running at 30? And Borderlands, I'd argue, was just as big, or, just as crazy, big, just as loot drop, just as co-op, just I, as, you know, running around. I'd have to go back and see what Back for Blood was running at. Was Back <laughs> for Blood 60 FPS? Because, I mean, that's almost like the same game it looks like with this. Instead of hunting zombies and monsters, it's like vampires. I, well, I wanted to look at this, too. This is a couple of upcoming games that are first-party studio games that are like, what happens if these ones aren't? aren't 60 so obviously starfield's coming out like that'd be an odd one gears 6 imagine if gears came out and it wasn't running at 60 perfect dark another shooting game that's coming out indiana jones a game that's coming out send you a saga hellblade and project mara avowed outer worlds 2 would be an interesting one fable we'll probably never ever get that one um ghostwire tokyo we know just came out state of decay 3 it's just all these games are coming out and it's like why is it that the sony and playstation 5 has no trouble doing big juggernaut titles, and they're struggling that with like Redfall had, yeah. by Arcane. That's the thing is, I feel like they like Microsoft really fought an uphill battle at the start of this generation and earned all this goodwill and got back into like the good graces of gamers and people, and now they're just burning it all away with what seems like mistakes and mismanagement. I even wrote down right here because I was thinking what it makes me think of 
is um, like the difference between Xbox and PlayStation is that scene from like uh, Jobs with like Ashton Kutcher where they're like, what what is it? Why do people buy an Apple? What does it mean to buy an Apple? They're like, it's bravado. It's social currency. It's your status. And that's what it almost seems like they're burning that currency now. So it's like, okay, Xbox is for, uh, we're back to the narrative Xbox is just for people who whatever PlayStation is for the gamers. Now we're back to that same narrative because you can't get your shit together. Like I don't understand what they're doing. And I wonder, cause I was talking to Gino about this is like, do you think part of it is because they're so distracted with the Activision deal? And I'm like, well, you have different branches. So how could marketing or this team have anything to do with that, that that would pull resources away. So I don't think that that's like a fair narrative to say is be like, Oh, they're distracted. I think it's just complete mismanagement because, I mean, Halo was... Ran in the ground. Uh, ran, yeah. Slowly oh, building itself back up, and I don't think it's even back with the former glory. Exactly, and then uh, now this, and it's just it just seems like it's almost one thing after another. It's always like one step forward, two steps back. Well, you know what I was... Now that you brought that up, I was kind of thinking is... Because I'm thinking, I'm like, obviously the Game Pass is a big seller, but the other thing that Game Pass does is... Um, it gives you cloud access, and I'm w- wondering if Redfall maybe is connected to the cloud in some way, and if it is a game that you can, you know, instead of downloading, you can run on the cloud with friends. I wonder if that holds any games back from launching at 60 FPS, <coughs> you know what I mean? Like, if it's if it's coming on the cloud and it and it can't function on the cloud at 60 FPS, then, are, then can you sell it, you know, to the average person who's not using it on Game Pass at, at 60 FPS? I wonder if that might have anything to do with the tethering it down. I, I mean, that could be, and that's an interesting idea, and I wonder if you almost leave that up to, like, a case-by-case basis, because why would you have to launch with that and focus on the 60 FPS and do the cloud thing later, because anyone could download and uninstall and do whatever. Yeah, but I would argue that their kind of main thing is that we're more cloud innovative Play and we're moving this way, and, we'll, and we'd rather have this ready, and then we'll patch that in as soon as it's all done, versus what I'm with you. Do it the other way around, add cloud later, because I'd argue that the other one is the, what more people want versus... A technology that's not really all there, and not a lot of people really. I mean, when's the last time you clouded a game? Uh, yeah, never. <laughs> you don't use any of the cloud stuff on the on the past. Not unless it's something I'm trying out first before I'll just download it. Because I also got the two terabyte expansion when everything uh, first came out. So for me, it didn't matter. I mean, all I can really say is, I mean, this isn't their only problem. Coupled with other things, that my patience is kind of wearing thin for them because it's just like, dude, like I don't get what you're doing because you can't get your own stuff right. You're having out of office problems with other developers and stuff too with games coming and going. It's like that and this is your big game for this year because we didn't have anything, I don't think, last year. This is your big game for this year and Starfield's your big game for this year. And I don't think either of those look good. I don't think they had a good showing for Starfield at all and they better hope that it looks good with whatever it is they're going to show in their June thing because all they've done is they showed a game that didn't Mm -hmm. look good that didn't do anything he's just kind of walking around a bland area and they're like all right this is our game and then afterwards we're gonna have like a million planets and you're gonna land on all these planets and it's gonna take you forever to explore i'm like that sounds even less interesting (laughs) well i wonder too if um like well i guess i'll 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 add it into the the next spot too so let's um is there anything else you want to add on that no okay so uh leave what your thoughts are with redfall uh, lagging on the 30 fps but it also kind of moves into our our second spot with Microsoft just kind of hitting these rough patches, and that's it. What's really going on with Square Enix? Because there's been a lot of issues of games that just slowly aren't finding its way to an Xbox home. And um, I wanted to read this real quick, and then we can kind of dive more into it. And this comes to us from uh, WCCFTech.com, uh, and they write. Uh, For much of its history, publisher Square Enix has had a cozy relationship with fellow Japanese companies Sony and Nintendo, but not so much with Xbox. In the 2010s, that changed with major Square Enix titles, including Final Fantasy, coming to Xbox. Well, it seems like things may have changed again. Final Fantasy XVI is a PS5 exclusive, but beyond that, a number of other games like Octopath Traveler 2 and Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters are somewhere arbitrarily skipping Xbox. Does Square Enix have some sort of beef with Microsoft? Well, maybe. According to Microsoft insider Jez Corden, he's heard that there's something functionally wrong with the relationship between Xbox and Square Enix. When pressed on Twitter about who should be blamed for this breakdown, Corden seemed to imply Microsoft was the culprit. For their part, Square Enix has been careful not to hint at any falling out with Microsoft. According to them, Final Fantasy XVI's 
uh, 16 is PS5 exclusive because Sony co-developed the game, allowing them to complete the project more quickly. And games like Octopath Traveler 2 are skipping Xbox after observing the sales of other titles on the system. Here's Square Enix on how closely they're working with Sony to make Final Fantasy 16. So I'm not going to read the rest of that. That article is in the description if you guys want to read more on what they were kind of saying. But he brings up two interesting points. One is Sony and Square Enix have had a golden relationship since day one. So the fact that Sony is showing more interest in actually helping develop these games for Square, I guess versus Microsoft not, that could lead to them going, okay, well then that buys us exclusivity for for a year or two because we're still waiting on Final Fantasy 7 remake and that came out uh what in 2020 and that was only supposed to be a year ex exclusivity the games we're waiting on now is Octopath Traveler 2 which went to the Switch and the Game Pass and skipped over PlayStation 4 but now number the two, first one yeah. yeah number one and now number two is only on PS4 PS5 as well as the Nintendo Switch and then, more importantly, the Final Fantasy Pixel remasters, which is 1 through 6, those are coming just to PlayStation and uh, Nintendo Switch. So, they say, one, that Sony is helping them more with developing games, but the other one is that they're saying, which I find a little interesting, is that they look at their Square Enix games sales numbers on Xbox, and they're saying it's just not worth it anymore. It's just not worth us. And I find that hard to believe that we're just making a digital copy isn't worth just getting the money for it but what i was looking at on this is on video game charts it's just showing the hardware of what's actually out there I and mean, you look at something like switch it's at 123.9 million um consoles playstation 5 at 35.8 and growing rapidly compared to the stagnant xbox series x and s at 21.3 million copies it's easy to see that they could go well let's ride with the two guys that sell the most versions of our game but I wanted to ask you, Andrew, do you think that this is more of a thing where Square Enix is just trying to go back to its Japanese roots, right? Go with the uh, dance with the partner that brought you kind of thing. Go back into, you know, being what made them popular in the first place. Or do you think this is more they just have a grudge against Xbox? I don't know if it's so much a grudge, but I mean, there's got to be something there because, again, Final Fantasy VII was supposed to come out to something like Xbox. Put you don't just make a big banner saying it'll be out in a year and then put and it on the Twitter yeah. and have all this marketing out and then take it back down. Like you don't create all that stuff for nothing. So something had to have happened, and they haven't said anything about it. And it's just like, mm -hmm. are you just? And that's been the thing. That's the rumors is Xbox, like, there's some sort of issue on Xbox side. It's like, are you just not trying? Do you not know how to fucking talk to people? Like, are you more concerned with, again, the Call of Duty thing than this? Because I think this is just as important, if not more important. Because, I mean, you had Final, Final Fantasy XV come out. Um, then you had... Uh, when, did that, when did that deal start? Did that deal start around the same time Final Fantasy VII was out? Like, have we been knowing about the Activision thing since 2020? 2021 i think so maybe a little bit after that because i all because i remember when we were talking about it we were saying i wonder if this is in response to sony trying to get all these exclusives especially with square enix and final fantasy being a big name because i don't believe for a second that you can't say we're unhappy with the sales of final fantasy on xbox because it couldn't be that hard for you to put it on there and i can and i yeah. yeah and i guarantee you make it yeah don't make it physical put it digital and don't put and, it on game pass and you yeah don't put it on game pass but game, but Xbox paid them for it to be on Game right. Pass, so they had to have gotten some money's worth that they thought that was okay. So you can't say we're unhappy with sales when you agreed to a predetermined amount up front that you right. would have had to know. But I'm sure Final Fantasy 15 obviously sold more on other consoles, but I guarantee it was worth it for them to put it on Xbox. Yeah, well, because... It could have just sold 10 copies and that was it. Yeah, one of the other things that I know some people were kicking around is that is, um, is Sony looking at buying... Square Enix. And I don't think that's a unfair thing to to guess at because when you look at recently what happened when um when uh Square kind of sold off a lot of its western studios, so namely Crystal Dynamics, Eidos Montreal and Square Enix Montreal and with that uh, with its western studios and IP it gave up uh, Tomb Raider and Deus Ex to the Embracer group for an easy an easy sum of 300 million. The fact that I don't know why Microsoft didn't eat that up is one thing. So because they have Indiana Jones coming. So, yeah, so people were almost kind of um, speculating that 
they're shedding off a lot of this kind of Western IP and Western studios to kind of be more Japanese centric. And that they haven't been putting games like Final Fantasy on Xbox for the last, since 2020, last, you know, three, four years now. So that when Sony does buy them, there is no argument saying, oh, well, if you buy, if you guys take Square Enix away from us, then you're taking away Final Fantasy games. Because their argument will be, well, you haven't been having them for five years now. So do you think that's a fair, because once I was reading that and kind of looking more into what, what years have been going by, I'm like, that actually does make a lot of sense. They shed all this stuff for, for dirt cheap. And now you're going, well, they got rid of all that marketing saying Final Fantasy VII will be on Xbox. You don't see that anymore. And now it's going, well, yeah, there are, what could they say? You guys haven't had Final Fantasies coming to you for almost four or five years now. That's half a decade. I mean, that's not a bad argument. We'll find out more about that. Like, I would say that's almost like it would be fair, except for we think that there's an idea that Sony paid for it. So it's not a decision for Square to be like, hey, whatever. Sony went out of their way, so that kind of more makes them the asshole on that, those terms to be like, hey, don't put it on there, but then we're going to buy it out and we're going to change the narrative like, oh, that it just wasn't on there before, so it doesn't really matter. Well, over, over under 70% in the next five years, Sony owns Square Enix. I think under. You think under? I don't think that they need them, especially as far as what they're doing What they're doing right now works, so why buy them when you're already getting it? And I think <laughs> Why buy the cow when you're getting the milk for free? I think almost part of that narrative that kind of plays in that too, and maybe with like kind of their back a little bit to their sales, is why would anyone... Uh, Final Fantasy thirteen sucked. Bad. And you had 13, 1, 2, and 3 that were on Xbox. 14 got skipped because the cross-play or whatever. And then 15 was in development hell forever and that came out i enjoyed it for what it was but compared to other i like it wouldn't break my top like five final fantasies i don't think so again why would people go out racing for these shell versions of final fantasy what final fantasy used to be and then now say like oh well xbox isn't interested it's like no we are i guarantee you put final fantasy 7 remake part one out i I would go buy it today you would go buy it today Gino, I, Christian, right now. I, I know ev- everybody I know that owns an Xbox would go and buy that today. That game would do mad numbers. And even Kingdom Hearts 3, I don't think released to like amazing fanfare. I personally didn't like it. I remember towards the end hating it. I'm like, compared dude, this game Compared to 1 and 2, it's not the I same. was like, dude, this game sucks. Like, I don't even know if after playing this, I'll play the next Kingdom Hearts because this one was just that bad for me. Well, I was looking up Kingdom Hearts 4 because I was going to be curious because if that, if we, if that one was going only to... To PlayStation, then I think that would have been a much bigger red flag too. But I'm looking up now, and as of right now, it still shows Series X and Series S. So it's not like Square Enix is dropping them completely because I wasn't no because I think who makes Stranger not Stranger Things who makes Life is Strange? Isn't that Square? Yeah, it's Square. But was that one before they sold out those studios? I wonder if it was like Square Montreal or something like that. Oh, I'd have to look that up. I don't know offhand because I didn't play those. But um, yeah, so it is interesting to see that Microsoft is getting kind of the short end of the stick, but. At the same time, I mean... Hey, at least they saved us from having to play for Spoken. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. But I did want to ask you this. With with these kind of movements and, and you know more games coming out with 30 FPS, because that needs to change, and if it doesn't, would you see yourself maybe eventually diving into a PS5 just to, to rock some titles, or are you still going to go down with the ship, per se, with the, with Xbox? Assuming, you know, Because you, now you're not going to be able to play Final Fantasy 1 through 6. You're not going to be able to play Final Fantasy 16, which I know was a game you were looking forward to. And I'm going to be over here my big, juicy PS5 just hacking and slacking my, I think and what it, myself away. what it would really take for me is they would have to get like Capcom and Sega like away. So like Resident Evils and Yakuza's back on whatever. Then maybe I'd be like, alright, well, I'll have to get a PS5 now. I think Final Fantasy... Especially based off the last ones and based off what happened with Forspoken, I'd have to wait and see. Remake 1 was good, but I'm still holding out hope that it's coming. So Nice. Well, I think that's most of what we wanted to say, <coughs> kind of catching up of the stuff of the last week or so, what's going on with Microsoft. Was there anything else you wanted to point out that Microsoft isn't getting, that they're slowing down on? I mean, I, I, we wanted to talk about um, Suicide Squad, but that's a third-party game. That really has nothing to do, per se, with, with Microsoft or Xbox. So. I think the only thing Microsoft needs to do is... And if they're investing in stuff, invest in a glass stomach so you don't have to pull your head out of your ass and you can see where you're going. Because right now, you're killing me. There was... I, what did I just read on Twitter? Um, what's the next... For, or for is that? Uh, is it Motorsport? Not, instead of Horizon, they do the other one. That one just got oh. delayed again, too. And uh, that would suck. Because if a car game came out and it wasn't at the best you know, performance in, or fidelity, whatever you prefer, then you would really have some issues. So I think... 
since they own like a million studios now, take a studio, build a brand new studio, do something. If you're not going to have Final Fantasy, make one. You're telling me you can't find the talent to hey, build wait on Fable. <laughs> some sort of classic JRPG styled game when you have tons of inspiration out there that you can't build a team to do something? What's, um. Hey, if this guy can build, if one guy can build Chain Echoes, then you can get a team to build something. What's the other game that I'm thinking of? Because, uh, Fantasy Sega had. Star? Yeah, because yeah, Sega had to do the same thing because yep. they didn't have. And Fantasy Star, a lot of people back in that time said, you know, you could pick or choose which one you thought was better. So it's been done before. So why not do it now? If I, I, I honestly don't know. I think they really need to do something, and, and they need to do it now. Yeah, not later, not <laughs> after lunch. Now they need to do it two days ago. So. Um, I think that's all we have to say about that, guys. Leave your thoughts uh, down below of what you think Microsoft's doing wrong. And do you think ever, Square is ever going to bring them back into the fold with some of these classic Final Fantasy titles that they've just launched and new ones moving forward? Because I definitely would pre rather prefer them on there, but it's not going to stop me from playing on, on the PS5 right. or the Switch. Because I was looking at that Pixel Collection, and I would love to play that on the Switch. Yeah, I went through and did 7, 8, 9, 10, 12. So I was looking forward to going back because I've never played 1 through 6. Would you get them on the Switch and, and knock them out that way? Ah, uh, no. Without the achievements, it's just, yeah, not, it's not, it's just it. not the same. <laughs> nice. So uh, that is it, guys, and leave your thoughts down below. So let's move into... Uh, questions of the week. Now, guys, if you want to leave questions that Andrew and I can answer on the show, you can do so a couple of ways. You can uh, leave them down in the YouTube comment section. We can grab them there. You can email us at lastcallproductions at gmail.com, or you can find me at uh, on any of the social medias at Craig Perales. So uh, today we just have the one question. We try to keep the show as tight as we can today, and this comes from Chimera, and they write, uh, I've been playing the Street Fighter 6 demo. So far, I'm really enjoying it. Did you guys get a chance to play it? Um, yeah, I wish we would have div dove a little farther into it, but I just saw the question earlier today. So, Andrew, when he came over here, we both started playing it and um, taking a look at it because I paused it right at the character creation because I didn't want Andrew to miss that. I think it has a very intricate um, character creation because I think that's actually going to be the thing that makes it stand out. This character that you can build bringing it into this world with these um, obviously established characters and then slowly kind of pick out your fighting style. So before we get into the fighting style into that, was there anything on the character creation that you wanted to talk about? I like it. There's a lot of options you can do. I definitely think we built some like weird Just quick, like, fast. <laughs> turbo man looking guy yeah. with like, weird T-chest. <laughs> But I think that'll be this part of the Armstrong to me. <laughs> I think that'll be part of the thing is like um like the uh, same thing with like Elden Ring or Dark Souls. People build these weird, ugly, funny people and then do stuff with it. Like the I, IGN uh, one was disgusting. Like, <laughs> like in Dark Souls three, there's like a swamp area. So there's this dude who only invades in the swamp, and he's this big fat guy that's skin is all green, and his screen name is Shrek. And yeah. like it, he's just yelling, "Get out of my swamp!" As he's chasing people with the club. That's so funny. I feel like you'll maybe get something like that out of how much. Well, just like um, I'm trying to think of some of the other games that you can do. Like how many people are you gonna see that like when people build like a Goku or people are gonna build like Scorpion? Do you think there's yeah. gonna be a lot of that going on? Yeah, uh, definitely a lot of... Because that like, happens in those games, right? As long as you can get the, the outfits and stuff. Yeah, uh, definitely a lot of like anime-inspired things. There's for sure going to be like a one-punch bald man or something. <laughs> so uh, the character creation was was pretty cool. As far as the uh, other that part thick of the game... Back hair. Yeah, they had... So they the, the demo has the world tour and the fighting grounds open to you. And uh, it looked pretty cool. There was uh, the, the open world... I think was what we really had questions on because watching it in the trailer, it's kind of hard to tell what you're actually able to do with this. And Andrew it's, and I were kind of walking around exploring it. It seemed a lot more fun. It seemed chapter based, right? Like yeah, area. it's it's definitely chapter based. When you try to leave an area, it says like you can't go this way until you know in chapter one. Now we use the term open world very loosely. I don't know like yeah, how yeah. you would kind of like describe this thing. It's more like a sectioned off like it's yakuza a little, a little sandbox. I would, say. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, I either way, I like the idea of it though for like a story mode or something like that. Because as you're going around, uh, you can just like challenge people to fights, whether you're higher or lower level than them. And uh, I like that as you're going, you can. Uh, it, we only found the one person, Luke, because that's who's like your trainer or whatever. But it says that you can find other masters and train under them to get their styles and stuff like that as far as your custom guy goes. Yeah. So I'd like to see more and see kind of where it's going to go. But that, like, right now you're just in the place that kind of seems like New York. But it'd be cool if you go to, like, 
you know, like Russia or like China, Japan, and all these other places or something like that. That'd be pretty cool. Well, yeah. By the time uh, then we recorded this, we didn't even get to finish the demo yet. So like we we played. No, I, I I finished it. At the oh, end. you you finished it? Yeah. Once I did that last part where, uh, spoiler like the ending, you do whatever and then you like fight Luke and like a two on one fight. After okay, that was, that okay. I didn't know yeah. that was the ending. Okay, cool. So yeah, it did show what I thought was interesting too is when you start learning these different moves, you can kind of plug and play your character because I was kind of curious I was asking Andrew I'm like I, I, it's weird in the beginning they don't ask you what kind of style you want to pick but that was kind of instantly rectified later on when you find out the more masters you can beat the more styles you can learn the more moves you unlock the more you can kind of customize how you're um, building your character and then you can also put in your stats and skills they're going to build up do you want to be more of a hand fighter you can be more of a kicker and then I think you pointed out to me that you can respect at any time. You can redo your yeah, guy, really and you cool. can completely flip him around. So I think people are going to have a lot of fun with this. I think it's going to have a, a lot of longevity because not only are you going to be able to do the world tour with multiple characters, we do, there's also what we look at the arcade system that lets you, I think, go through some of the story modes with each of the playable characters. So it looks like a lot of fun and not just a one-time you know, run through the main story like how when I beat Tekken 7. Once I was done with that, you know, because I don't really play online, it looks like this has a lot of fun with its storyline. I do want to note too, and I don't know if this was in the last one, and I hope it's not something that carries over to like online play because I don't think that would be fair. But they do a lot of emphasis on the like modern uh, controls or like the classic controller. So like you push like just triangle or something to do like the Shadouken versus like the down forward or down diagonal forward and then square in order to do that. So you can either have like the complicated buttons, or for someone like me who doesn't really play Street Fighter and I kind of just want to. I, again, I don't want to play online. Just enjoy the story and do whatever. You can have like a more simplified version, so that way it feels. I don't want to use the term like Mortal Kombat-y because it's not as easy, or I mean that's not as easy as that. But again, you're you're not having trouble pushing all these buttons to do all the moves. You can simplify it a whole lot more. So I think that's something cool. I hope it doesn't carry over to online because I don't think that that would be fair unless you do like a like a separate bracket, like a simple controller versus simple controller. Because then it's not fair for people who have to do like all the crazy button presses and I'm just pushing square spamming stuff or something. Does the full game, is, is the release date June 2nd? I think so, yeah. Okay, so I, because I thought you could play the demo up until the release date, but I thought the release date was um, later, I thought it was the 28th, but I... No, it's, it's, like, it's like a whole while. Okay, yeah, so I don't know if the demo is open until the, the game comes out, I don't... I don't think it would, they would take it off, but you've got. I know you've got time to play it. So if you haven't checked it out right now, it's only on the PS4 and the PS5. Hey, another another Sony victory. So another thing that Microsoft does not get. So if you're interested in checking it out, you can check it out on the PS4 and the PS5 right now. So guys, that is uh, the end of episode 166. Join us next week, guys, for episode 167. Until then, guys, my name is Craig Prowls. That is Mandrew Motsver. See ya. Cheers. Uh -huh. I hit your finger. <laughs> <laughs>